Holy <laughs> God damn. Oh shit, bro. American forces are not used to being on the receiving end of this kind of firepower. Shit, another one, another one. They are usually the ones delivering it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared at the moment, um, but it happened. It's something that we were ready for, um, ready as can be. Ready for some sort of ground attack by Iran's proxies, ready for mortars and rockets, but this base is not equipped to defend against ballistic missiles. On any other night, some of the two and a half thousand troops and contractors would have been in the area's hit. The ballistic missile reporting started to come in a couple hours before the event. And so at that point, we were we were really scrambling on, you know, how to protect against that. Um, and so it really came down to dispersion, you know, putting space between people and then also uh, getting them into hardened bunkers just to, just to provide that protection. At 11 p.m., those who could started to hunker down in bunkers built by their former enemy. This is a Saddam Hussein era bunker. It is. So we uh, felt we'd be somewhat safe in here because it was designed to take, you know, some kind of hit or it was built for, you know, ballistic missiles. At 1.34 a.m., the first missiles hit. And these doors, every time one of the uh, missiles hit, the doors would, would, would kind of sink in. Dozens of troops were still out in the open, holding their positions to protect the base. There was still the threat of incoming rockets, mortars, and a ground assault. Pilots were still at their stations operating drones. As I was going, to, going across the gravel, um, I could look out to like the eastern sky and I see this just orange streak. So I uh, started sprinting and yelling incoming, getting everybody kind of warning, and then it hit, so yeah. Flames swallowed up the drone team's living quarters. Some 30 troops would have been sleeping here had they not been ready. Others rushed around the base as missiles came down, looking for anyone who may have been injured, checking on the base's defenses. Along the base perimeter, young soldiers on their first tour fought the instinct to flee and stayed, manning the guard towers. It was definitely scary at first, but we both knew we had a job to do, manning the tower, keeping eyes front. So we had to do that more than anything, focused on that, trying not to focus on everything behind us. When one strike hit too close, they vaulted into the back of a truck and held their position there. It was a night unlike any here had experienced, hunkered down for about two hours, unable to fight back. Some crammed into bunkers that weren't built to withstand missiles like these. These kinds of small bunkers exist throughout the base, but they're meant to protect against rockets and mortars. The ballistic missiles that were fired are about 3,000 times more powerful than that. The blast from this one knocked over a four-ton T-wall, but if that hadn't happened, those who were sheltering here probably would not have survived. Come daybreak, fear of finding out who was killed or wounded was eclipsed by the joyous shock that no one was. It's like, what are those reunions like when you kind of see someone who you're close to and you realize that you're, you're both okay? It's a warm feeling deep in the heart that all your friends, your family here is okay. <clears throat> it just felt like forever since I'd seen my guys and, you know, there's a lot of hugging and a lot of tears and a lot of just it's just a great feeling knowing that all your people are okay and this is where you used to yeah this is my room uh, a little bit more open floor plan now <laughs> but yeah my bunk was right in the corner right there and this is my neighbor <laughs> up here but every, everything's obviously gone it's just happy no one was inside you know? It's kind of freaky looking at it like this, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's surreal. Um, I'm not bothered looking at it. It's just, you know, it's a reminder. Threat still exists. I think, you know, we have each other. We had each other that night. And we'll always, it's a brotherhood that we never break because of it. Does it change your perspective on life? <laughs> it does. It does. It could, you know, it could be over in a, you know, in an instant. It really does. 
and it really makes me value value mostly my team. The base is still on high alert. The dining facility is open, but people eat elsewhere to avoid a large crowd gathering. We got a little bit of the military says they are ready for what may come next. Iran's proxies on the ground continue to vow revenge. Even for those who have seen war before, this was unlike any other battlefield experience. The overwhelming feeling of helplessness that comes with being under ballistic missile attack, to be at the mercy of the enemy, one that could strike again, even if it's not like this. Arwa Damon, CNN, Al-Assad Air Base, Iraq. Thank you.